Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Process Technology Part 2, Module 40. Um, there was a slight delay in the uh, lectures, lecture modules because of some logistic uh, issues. I am going to sort of complete whatever was left over in the seventh week and this particular week uh, in the following one or two days and probably by Wednesday we will get everything posted. So thanks for bearing. I think you already have an email uh, in the chat platform from uh, uh, my TAs who have briefed you and given you and shared the notes uh, that I am going to do in the following uh, few lectures. So today we are going to just take off from uh, the point we left earlier which was about laser machining and uh, what we had discussed was really the minimum input power which was needed to melt the material on a laser machined surface which would be related to 2 k th theta m divided by d where d is the spot diameter of the laser, k is the thermal conductivity and theta m is the melting temperature of the particular workpiece material. <laughs> so having calculated the minimum input power to melt the material, the next goal is that how the heat conduction would take place once the let us say a deep and narrow hole is uh, created or uh, laser drilled into a substrate. So today we are going to look into that aspect and we are going to see what is going to be a sort of a steady state approximation in the way that a hole penetrates or a hole gets formulated by a laser beam falling on a substrate. So let us look at that. So if the molten pit is de deep and narrow as you can see here in this figure right uh, about here, the major portion of the heat conduction uh, from the molten hole takes place across its side walls. So these arrows here represent you know the side wall heat conduction which is happening from all directions assuming this to be a cylindrical hole. So when the heat input rate is equal to the, uh, to the heat loss a steady state uh, would be reached and the molten pit remains or retains its shape and size because now whatever you are adding here has enabled a portion of the uh, material to hit a condition of theta equal to theta m while the inflow and outflow are balanced now and there is a certain state of temperature or a state of equilibrium which is established so that the whole shape and size does not change anymore. So let us suppose that you know we uh, balance or we try to represent this heat conduction problem in terms of a cylinder with its inner walls and outer walls maintained at two different temperatures. So let us say there is a concentric annular cylinder which we are considering and uh, so we have a situation where uh, the cylinder is uh, having uh, an inner and outer radius uh, and it is a tube that we are considering with a certain wall uh, thickness around. Further we assume that the cylinder has infinite length and that the inner cylindrical surface is maintained at a constant temperature which is equal to the melting temperature of the material. So you know that within this particular zone uh, shown by the dotted uh, geometry you have theta equal to theta m or melting point uh, of the material is reached in this particular zone. So the wall temperature as well is that theta m okay? and uh, it is maintained at that constant temperature assuming that the hole has fully penetrated and occurred and theta uh, is now equal to theta m in that zone which we call the hole. The outer temperature of course is also a constant temperature. So we have the outer temperature as theta O here is constant temperature and we wish to determine the temperature distribution and uh, the direction and magnitude of the heat flow within the material using cylindrical coordinates r and, and uh, phi and further we assume radial symmetry uh, and uh, try to look at what would be the heat conduction equation between the inner wall 
and the outer wall. So, this is the inner wall of the tube and this is the outer wall of the tube. So, if supposing h dash is the rate of heat loss by the molten portion which is actually inside uh, the cavity here, this is the molten portion. Okay. Just estimating something on the real sense as in this dotted region. So, we can write simply the one dimensional uh, heat conduction equation as minus uh, k d theta by dr okay, equals uh, this h uh, dash which is the rate of heat loss that means, this is really the uh, rate of heat flow outside uh, the inner wall or going into the from the inner to the outer wall uh, per unit area. So, the area of this wall if supposing we assume the total height here to be z and the radius uh, of this concentric to be r you know. So, we have h dash by twice pi r z as the rate of heat loss per unit area which is actually equal to by the simple Fourier's law minus k uh, d theta by dr. We have done this kind of problems earlier while discussing about uh, the E beam machining as well as the, um, the laser the, the other EDM electro discharge machining etcetera. So, if we wanted to solve this within the boundaries that have been mentioned particularly the melting boundary and the normal temperature or the room temperature condition we have minus k times of integral theta m to theta 0 d theta becomes equal to h dash by twice pi uh, z times of integral. Uh, Let us assume the inner dia to attain finally, uh, the value small d and the outer dia can be something like capital D and uh, this dr by r. Okay. So, that is how we can estimate uh, the you know uh, probably the h dash which is needed for changing the whole dimension from certain size. Okay. This could be 0 where this uh, small d really is the uh, diameter of the melt zone. So, you can assume that as the whole uh, has gotten formulated over a certain diameter uh, in which the heat flux boundary condition exists. For example, in this case there is a heat flux boundary condition which exists uh, in this particular diameter d which is actually the probably the spot diameter of the laser. right? So, there is a you know per unit area constant heat input rate. So, I can call h to be the heat input rate per unit area and this is constant assuming that the uh, laser <coughs> is uniformly supplying heat along its whole <coughs> diameter area. In the real sense laser has a Gaussian profile, but we are assuming here <coughs> for simplicity sake, so that the thermal model can be properly constructed. So, here uh, you know d is the diameter of that melt zone and then the capital D is really the point where the temperature goes back to normal theta 0. So, this is actually let us say the considered outer diameter where the temperature boundary is really the room temperature boundary. So, uh, normally d by d ratios of about 55 are very normal to have in case of let us say machining steels and uh, <coughs> other tungsten sheets etcetera. So, uh, what it typically means is that the whole, whole temperature raises to almost the melting temperature of steel or melting temperature of tungsten and about 55 times this diameter we have a zone where the temperature goes down all the way to the room temperature value. Okay. So, I solve this equation now uh, which I have constructed here. So, we are left with minus k 
theta 0 minus theta m equals h dash by twice pi z times of the natural log of capital D by small d ok or in other words I can estimate the heat flux <coughs> or, or the heat rate of outflow from the cylindrical surface of the assumed cylinders to be twice pi z k times of theta m minus theta 0 by this l n d upon d. So, as I, I think already mentioned here that <coughs> the d by t in normal sense you know uh, is more than 55. So, we write this down here. So, generally the capital D by d remember this is the diameter where theta equal to theta 0 or room temperature. This is the diameter which is corresponding to the melting point and if we talk about tungsten or steel it is a very very high melting point. So, uh, by the time the temperature mitigates from the theta m value to let us say room temperature the diameter gets increased multiple folds. So, generally d by d in case of very high temperatures of tungsten or chromiums I mean the steel etcetera you know uh, attains a ratio which is more than 55 ok. So, therefore, if we really looked at <coughs> uh, capital D by small d this has to be 55 or the natural log of capital D by small d could be about 4 ok. So, uh, let us now look at the heat input boundary which is actually on the top of the hole and uh, we assume the h really to be <coughs> the axial heat flux. per unit area let us say and uh, <coughs> further uh, you know we also assume here that our out heat outflow is in the radial direction starting from the side walls <coughs> to outer walls and that to radially ok only radially. In other words we are not assuming that there is any kind of heat flow possible in this particular direction in the axial direction and all the axial heat which is coming here is getting uh, you know is flowing out from the side walls of, of the cylinder. So, this is a condition what normally uh, is necessitated particularly because these diameters that we are talking about are very very small based on the spot size of the laser and it is uh, probably worth to uh, make such an assumption that there is hardly any uh, flow uh, in the axial direction and all the heat flows mostly in the radial direction. Particularly in case of through, through drilling and all uh, this is mostly the case and uh, therefore, if we assumed that to happen uh, in this particular case you know then we are left with and so, we uh, we kind of assume here that you know at equilibrium condition when uh, such a heat flux uh, is existing on one side as an input to the system axially and on another side as a radial outflow from the system as you can see in this figure this is the input side you know axial input side and this is the radial uh, radial output side. So, at equilibrium whatever heat comes in goes out and there is some kind of a theta equal to theta m or theta equal to theta melting condition which causes this hole to sort of uh, get formulated and generated. So, in that event we uh, can equate the in inflow the heat inflow as a heat outflow and we know that heat per unit area per unit time h is coming from the laser spot from the top of the hole which whose diameter is uh, uh, 
d square so the heat times heat per unit area times the area gives you the total quantum of heat which has come in uh, per unit time and the total quantum of heat which is going out per unit time is again given by h uh, dash which i had just illustrated earlier and this h dash was earlier calculated in the last step as twice pi zk times of theta m minus theta 0 divided by the natural log of capital D by small d. So, if we equate these two conditions we are left with h times of pi d square by 4 equals twice pi times of z times of k times of theta m minus theta 0 divided by ln capital D by small d. Okay. So, in other words generally the uh, condition that you arrive at is to sort of in this kind of equilibrium situation estimate what is going to be the value of z. So, the value of z uh, this again can be estimated as 4 from the last step right here uh, the value of z becomes then equal to we uh, cancel out this pi by 4 on both sides and we are left with z equals the total heat you know per unit area per unit time which is input to the system from the laser beam times of d square divided by twice times of the thermal conductivity k of the material times of theta melting of the material minus theta 0 room temperature. So, basically uh, that is how you can arrive at what is going to be the depth of the melting temperature or what is going to be really the z value up to which theta equals theta m or theta is greater than theta m. Okay. So, that is how you calculate or give an estimate of uh, with a steady state let us say hole penetration formulation uh, that how much <coughs> it will how much depth the, the laser will go up to uh, if we assume equilibrium state of heat inflow equal to heat outflow. Now, the other goal that we have is that in such a case uh, we also need to arrive at you know what is going to be the relation between the heat input that we are giving and the cutting speed because ultimately the purpose of a laser is to sort of not only uh, create uh, a certain depth of penetration, but uh, also keep creating it in the forward direction. So, that you can have the whole cutting process executed or the slot whatever you want to cut has to be executed. So, it is about also that velocity the rate at which you are scanning the laser given this whole uh, time criteria or the depth of melting temperature criteria that we have arrived at in the last step. So, let us look at that relationship. So, let us talk about the relationship between the heat input and the cutting speed okay. and uh, you know particularly I would like to mention here that when the beam intensity is very high uh, maybe let us say of the order of about 10 to the power of 7 watt per centimeter square it is a very very high uh, beam flux that is you know per area. Uh, which is heat flux which is coming uh, uh, as, as, a, as a function as because of the laser lasing action on the surface. And so, the, the heating also is very rapid okay. and uh, the earlier relationship between the depth of melting temperature and the melting temperature is no longer valid. Okay. So, uh, in the earlier uh, relationship we had assumed that we have a steady state condition where the heat flow inside the uh, zone of melting is exactly equal to the heat outflow. Uh, in this particular uh, condition we are probably not giving it time enough for the equilibrium condition to arrive at. <coughs> so, in that event the incident beam uh, sort of heats up to the surface to its vaporization point. It evaporates uh, the material quickly and uh, you know the, the, the surface of the work where the beam falls uh, suddenly recedes and the material is taken its to its vaporization temperature. And uh, in that event if we assume v to be the velocity with which the surface kind of recedes because of the beam matter interaction and the rate of heat input required to vaporize the material <laughs> can be given by this following equation here where let us say if L were the amount of energy which was needed to vaporize a unit volume of the material. We are talking about a case where you know we have uh, the heat flux that means the heat per unit area uh, equals to 
let us say you know the velocity at which this recession is happening on the surface times of uh, the L value. Let us understand it a little more closely. So, when we are talking about a diameter through which the heat input is happening, you have already seen earlier that in the laser uh, surface interaction you have a certain diameter, basic diameter small d over which the heat input is happening and this is the heat flux. So, you have the uh, h as per unit area how much heat is going uh, to to be in. So, if that uh, you multiply with velocity, so area velocity product is really the volume um, rate of evaporation the volume rate of recession of the surface. And so, you can easily say that the heat flux uh, you know per unit area equals the uh, the rate at which you know the surface recedes that is the velocity times the amount that is needed uh, to vaporize a unit volume. Okay. So, L is per unit volume how much energy is needed. So, let us look at this problem little closely we have a laser beam with a power intensity of let us say about 10 to the power of 5 watt per millimeter square or 10 to the power 7 watt per centimeter square is used to drill the uh, hole in a tungsten sheet and the thic thickness of the sheet has been provided to be 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, the drill diameter is about 200 microns. So, that is what uh, is going to be the hole diameter and further we uh, have the L values for this particular material tungsten as 3 into 10 to the power of 4 joule per centimeter cube and this is required to vaporize this amount of L or this amount of energy is needed to vaporize a unit volume of the tungsten material. <coughs> so, we want to estimate the time uh, required to drill a through hole obviously, the diameter is 200 microns and the thickness is also provided. So, the amount of volume to be uh, taken out using machine is machining is known. We assume a coupling efficiency of about 10 percent. So, only about 10 to the power 4 watt per millimeter square is felt you know as a usable power on the surface and we are already aware of the relationship h equal to v l uh, h is per unit area heat flux uh, or heat rate you, you can say uh, at, at, at which the laser uh, sends in energy into the work surface. So, obviously, the velocity at which the surface recedes should be equal to h by l l being equal to 3 10 to the power of 4 joule per centimeter cube and uh, typically we have a 10 percent coupling. So, our h which is felt by the surface really is about 10 to the power of 4 watts per millimeter square and therefore, we can say that v becomes equal to 10 to the power of 4 uh, watt per millimeter square and uh, if I wanted to convert that into uh, watt per centimeter square this multiply by 10 to the power 2. So, this is watt per centimeter square times uh, 1 by L and the L happens to be about 300 or 3 into 10 to the power 4 joules per centimeter cube. So, 3 10 to the power of 4. So, overall then the velocity at which the surface would recede is about 3.3 10 to the power of 2 centimeter per second and we are already aware that we need to <coughs> cut a point 5 mm thickness uh, of the sheet. So, in order to make a through hole the time required <coughs> would be equal to 0 0.5 millimeters times 1 by 3.3 10 to the power 2 the parameter of velocity that we found centimeter per second and this uh, becomes equal to because it is uh, 0 0.5 millimeters thickness. So, we have this into minus 1. So, 0 0.05 uh, centimeter thickness and the t value becomes equal to 0 0.0015 seconds. So, uh, a thickness of sheet equal to about 500 micron about uh, 5.5 mm can be through drilled using this particular laser system for less than about 0 0.0015 seconds. So, it is a very very 
small amount of time that laser melting would really need for the machining to take place and that's why laser machining is considered to be a high yield or a fast process uh, of machining there are other uh, machining means also and i just wanted to illustrate just the basic uh, definitions of this plasma arc machining process so as we all are aware a plasma is really a high temperature ionized gas and uh, uh, basically this uh, plasma arc machining is done with a high speed jet of high temperature uh, plasma and the plasma jet kind of heats up the work piece and causes quick melting and this uh, kind of machining can be probably used on all materials particularly ones which conduct electricity and they can formulate an electrode and can result in formulation of a plasma and uh, they can also be particularly applicable to those materials which are resistant to uh, the oxygen based fuel gas conventional cutting technique okay so this process is extensively uh, used for various operations like let's say profile cutting of stainless steel uh, monel and super alloy plates so on so forth so we have already seen details about how a plasma is generated by subjecting a flowing gas to electron bombardment and this bombardment can come through an arc so normally as we have earlier seen in all our uh, microfabrication section that there is an arc which is set in uh, just to create enough amount of ions and electrons and then there is a uh, either a source based energy which is given in terms of a, a changing magnetic field or uh, you know a change of direction of motion of the ions and electrons so that the the sustenance of the plasma happens once formulated so this arc is set between the <coughs> electrode and the anodic nozzle in this particular case and the gas is forced to flow through this arc and uh, here is where the uh, details of this you know the schematic of this plasma arc machining process can be uh, seen so you have a cutting power supply and you have one of the electrodes uh, and there is a gas which is sent between this electrode and the anodic nozzle and there is a highly ionized uh, state of plasma created between these two electrodes which has again forced out of this chamber and it creates uh, damage so the high velocity electrons uh, with the gas an arc is typically set up in order to actuate this this plasma okay uh, they cause dissociation of the molecules you have already seen how diatomic molecules can be dissociated earlier in your microfabrication module and this substantially increases the conductivity of the gas uh, it comes into plasma state and you obviously get high velocity electrons <coughs> which uh, collide with further gas molecules causes dissociation of the diatomic molecules or atoms into ions electrons <coughs> and this results in substantial increase in the uh, the gas conductivity because of now the presence of a lot of ions and electrons or charge carriers so uh, the free electrons again would further uh, accelerate themselves and cause more ionization which kind of gives you a heating effect of this plasma and so at the end of the day from the anodic nozzle there comes out uh, increase the temperature plasma state because of uh, the free electrons and ions okay and uh, these ions and free electrons now recombine somewhere in the path so that they can give out heat release so here obviously because of this recombination there is a excessively high temperature it's a highly exothermic uh, process which happens close to the working substrate so the challenge here is really how to take this plasma state all the way close to the surface before the recombination takes place uh, so that you can get a high temperature uh, where uh, the zone of machining or the workpiece is kept so this is sort of <coughs> uh, accomplished by changing the nozzle shape and size and forcing out the plasma through this nozzle uh, at a certain velocity you know in the form of a form of a jet and uh, principally the mechanics of material removal again is based on heating and melting and also removal of the molten metal by the blasting action of the plasma the obviously the gas is shot at a certain 
velocity, so there is some plastic action. So the MRR, the material removal, MR happens due to the blast of the plasma. So I think now I would kind of have covered all the basic uh, non-traditional processes and this brings us to uh, the end of one section of this module. Uh, in the next uh, few lectures, I would focus more on uh, metal forming and maybe do one or two process models uh, with you about some forming processes and uh, that closes uh, the manufacturing technology, process technology part 2. So, thank you very much for being with us and uh, I would like to start the forming section from next module onwards. Thank you.